So this is a long topic. Let's see. <clears throat> We're gonna start with motifs. I'm gonna play by motifs. Then I'm gonna play by phrases, and then we're gonna play by sentences. So that's the plan. So motif is usually one bar, uh, and the slur would go through the bar line. The main interval usually leads to the first beat in the bar. In this case, it's the last interval in the motif. In my score, motifs are marked uh, with this small slur. Um, so here you have this is your first motif. So your main interval would be the last interval in this motif. So everything. The next one, again through the bar line, I'll tell you later why. Now a little note about uh, written already in the score of slurs, written slurs in the score, uh, they don't really show phrasing. Um, there are many different ideas about what those slurs actually mean, but we don't need any of them while making correct phrasing, that's for sure. They read them not systematically, then don't show anything. They, they just will bring chaos if we try to follow them. So the first thing is to feel motive. And to feel motive, you can sing it uh, first again, like I said. And uh, better you baking off in the beginning, better will be your motive. So get back as much as possible Start very simple, with zero weak energy, not important at all, and that will give you more space to the main interval to come. I'm going to show you what I mean. You will start like this, if you sing out loud. This is what I mean. So I wake up, because if you start, to you know like press because there's no space to go so you have to get back as much as possible that's the key of a successful phrasing actually and uh, after you wake up make gradually energetic crescendo and give 100% of energy in the main interval and you can make dynamical crescendo as well and uh, also take more time in the main interval so this little thing is like making dynamical crescendo together with energetical and making um, an expanding time in the main interval. This is just for you a little exercise, like preparation stage, to feel better energetic crescendo in the motive. So what you would do is this. If I sing... I would sing this way. And literally, I would play the same way. So I, I start very zero. Like the whole piece <laughs> is within one bar. So you have to feel that crescendo. Because if you don't really feel crescendo, then knowing you know, the size and the slurs of phrasing will not help. You have to feel everything. And that's what you can do. As I said, while playing, in that preparation stage, take more time in the main interval and then take little breaks between motive. And in this stage, allow yourself to make some dynamic crescendo to better feel energetic crescendo. So, this is exactly how you play. Get a weight, lift up your hands, imagine sound, start playing, thinking about motive.
I said, this is preparation stage, actually, I don't do this anymore, I never actually did it. This is basically for those who just start with the phrasing. Next, after this stage, play by motifs again, but this time, while remaining the same energetic crescendo, control your sound, avoiding any dynamical crescendo. So you make the same thing, but in a more real way. <laughs> Again, this is all about how you separate your intonation because basically phrasing and energetic crescendo belongs to how you sing from your imagination because the sound, as we know, is controlled by our imagination. Uh, again, my video titled Piano Masterclass Phrasing Energetic Crescendo will help you to better understand how to make energetic crescendo with phrasing without dynamical crescendo. A phrase is usually two bars or two motifs, sometimes three bars. And in the score, phrases are marked with a large slur above small motif slurs, and bold slurs are main motifs, and light slurs are secondary minor motifs. So just take a look again. And again, guys, I will tell you just in a second why you need to make the phrasing uh, by bars, not by melody pattern. On main motifs, you would expand the energy more. On minor motifs, expand less. Choose the main motif by simply singing and feeling what feels more natural. So this is already the part of your interpretation where you can basically sing and feel what feels better and more natural for you. Let's see, we have this uh, phrase. Okay, so we have two bars, two motifs here. Um, and you would need to feel, you know, which motif is more important, which slur to bold. So you just sing, first one, make first one more. Second time, make second one. And you can see that it's second time is like really not natural. So then you're okay, I decide to to bold the first motif, it's more important. So that's how you do. Uh, and again about the expanding of energy. Uh, well, you already understand after the motif what I mean by expanding man energy. So basically you will still play feeling motifs and main intervals in the motifs, but main motif would be more and less motif would be less. See this one? To feel and embrace the whole phrase better, we need to start with singing. Sing the phrase fast enough, don't care about the pitch, focusing only on feeling more energy in the important motif and less energy in the secondary motif. This is very important, because even when if you know this is the most important and this is less important, if you don't feel it, there's no difference. So again, to feel it, just sing better, just sing faster. Just like this. Don't care about the pH, nothing. But your main thing is to feel it and to feel the energy. Just like this. While playing, make breaks between phrases, just like you did in motifs, controlling dynamical crescendo. So that's what you do in the phrase stage. Gather weight. Lift up your hands, imagine first notes and sound texture, start playing, thinking about phrasing, and take breaks between them. Back up again. Back off again. 
天。As you have noticed, you would have to play faster uh, when you're practicing phrases. Yeah, that's the thing. Don't try to embrace phrase while playing this slow, because you simply don't have the thought. You know, uh, humans, <laughs> we we have this kind of a size of the thought, <laughs> so um, we cannot really embrace something that goes beyond that thought. So just make it faster. So it would fit to your thought, and you would feel this uh, wholeness and beauty of of one phrase. That's why I need to play fast enough. sentence. A sentence is usually two phrases or sometimes three phrases and though there is no large slur in the score to show sentences in my score, by simply making bolder the slur of the main phrase we can have an idea about the size of the sentence. So take a look at the picture. And as you can see, there is like bold phrase slur and light phrase slur. So both together create one sentence. Again, by simply singing fast in your mind, you can choose which phrase you would want to emphasize more. So the same thing as with phrasing, when we were choosing motives, uh, you need to simply choose. And again, it's your interpretation, which phrase you want to make more in the sentence. Let's say you start... So this is your sentence. This is one sentence. And again, you can sing with no pitch, but just to feel the energy. When you emphasize first move, uh, when you emphasize first, first, <laughs> when you emphasize first phrase, and then you sing when you emphasize second phrase. So let's see. Let's go other way around. Again, quite unnatural, like I'm forcing something. So I'm choosing to make the first phrase more important in the sentence. And it's gonna be very in harmony with the whole phrasing because in the phrase, the first motive also more important. So the first motive more important, and then the first phrase is more important in the sentence. And to feel and embrace the whole sentence better, you really need to sing it as fast as possible. <laughs> That's what we just did. While playing, you would need to speed up as well to embrace the whole sentence better. Get the weight, lift up your hands, imagine sound, and start playing, thinking about sentence. You can still make some break between sentences. Um, just want to say that the last two bars on the first page there would be like one phrase that is not connected to any other phrases uh, so this phrase I just put in the sentence so one phrase one sentence and the same thing in the second page one two three four five on the fifth row this so that could be also one phrase which will be also one sentence. And the uh, funny thing that both of them are very, very lyrical. It's like he wanted to put them aside, to light them up like this. Now, finally, now an important note. Phrasing is your interpretation of music. Rules are very flexible to find the phrasing, but yet I would like to give you some hints in finding phrasing in the score. To find which motive is more important Play the phrase fast to feel what feels more lovely and what feels unnaturally. Do the same with finding main phrases in the sentence. We did it already. Try not to change the pattern of phrasing often. Keep the same size of the phrase, like two bars, let's say, 
maybe sometimes three bars, and the same order in motives. So like, if you choose the main first motive, try to stick with first main motive. Keep the same size of the sentence and the same order in phrases. If you make it too complicated, that's a sign that the pattern is not natural. There is always a hint in the beginning, a pattern in the first sentence that you can always try first to see if it fits music throughout the piece. Usually it's the best way. So what I'm saying is that, for example, you figure, you figure out the pattern in the first sentence, the pattern of, of uh, phrases and motives, and try to keep and use the same um, theme for any other sentences. Because usually that's the most natural and easiest way. Um, and if you feel it doesn't really fit, then you can change something. Always remember that the main rule of finding good phrasing is simplicity. Do not really connect slurs to melody pattern, go strictly by bars instead. You'll be surprised to find out at the end that keeping evenly the same structure of phrasing will let your music flow. Because phrasing is the art of breathing. If too complicated, changing sizes of blocks and main sections in them, then breathing will stumble and the music will stumble as well. Also, keep in mind that you would need to have in mind clear structure of phrasing while playing without looking at the score. So simple structures will not confuse you. Simplicity is the key. Again, if needed, you can always ask me to help you with phrasing analysis. So, yeah, guys, that might be surprising for you because we thought that we should connect slurs to the melody pattern. But if we really go by the melody pattern, uh, there will be no even breath while playing. You will be breathing like longer, shorter, longer, shorter. And it's so confusing to keep in mind, unbelievably. Um, on the other hand, when you strictly go by bars, everything is mathematically kind of calculated and uh, beautifully structured, then that gives you the way, that gives, uh, that gives you the flow, the music will flow, your breathing will flow. Um, and as you can see, um, actually my playing is quite flexible and flowing as well, and I'm making the phrasing by bars. I'm connecting the motives and phrases to the bars, not to melody patterns.